working on our flower and bee painting. We have our background that's totally dry and we have a new paint palette that's set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of share some of the information of what we're gonna be doing and how we're gonna set up and get ready for our painting and then we'll dive into the painting. All right, so for the purpose of the video today, I'm gonna to be using three different size paint brushes. I'm gonna be using a very fine detail brush, uh, kind of a medium detail, also notice that all three are round and then a medium round one as well. You can kind of get away with one detail brush for this if you have kind of an in-between one. Okay, so since we are going to be working on the leaf, the leaves and the daisies in our flower, we need to go ahead and mix some greens. So that's why I have two different piles of yellow. So I'm going to make one lighter green, one medium green, and then I'm going to try to leave some blue over at the end so that we can make it really dark if we need to. So I'm just going to go ahead, I'm using a palette knife, you can definitely use a paintbrush um, to mix these together. Just realize that since I'm using um, a, a piece of paper, that you really want to make sure that you're not spreading out your pile of paint too far and allowing that paper to absorb um, the paint. So you really want to just kind of keep it in one area. And it doesn't have to be 100% mixed in. Um, you just want to have it mostly mixed in. You're looking for a painterly quality in this picture. So painterly quality really just means that um, you're not afraid to show paint brush strokes or a variation in color. Um, so right now we're just trying to make a little bit darker version of green so we can show some depth in our picture. So D-E-P-T-H. So the illusion that there's three dimensional space in your picture. And we do that by using highlights and shadows or a lighter color and a darker color. So I know that kind of looks a little off, it looks a little almost like grayish, but in my lighting it is definitely green. Okay, so cleaning off my palette knife before moving on, and then we'll go ahead and get started. There's a few other colors on my paint palette right now that we're not going to 100% worry about. I'm going to try and adjust the color. There we go. It's a bit dark, but it'll work. Okay, so um, we're going to start out with three main um, stems coming up. So those are going to be for our biggest portion of our purple flowers. So I'm just wetting my paintbrush, dabbing it off. You want to always get those bristles hydrated. And then I'm just going to use the darker of the two greens and just load up my paintbrush. So picking up, rolling it around, getting the whole thing covered. And then a lot of times when you're working with artwork, you want to work in odds. So that's why I'm going to do three. So a little bit thicker at the bottom for these stems and a bit thinner at the top. That's for most things. It's kind of what you want to go with. And part of these stems will get covered up later on um, when we're making the actual uh, flower on top. Okay. I'm going to put one going this way. You can really choose whatever direction you want them to go but you want to make sure you have an odd number. The human eye is very interested in odd numbers, um, just finds it way more appealing. It doesn't sort the number, um, so you spend more time actually paying attention to it. So yeah, so if you ever looked at professional artwork and wondered why there's always odd numbers of things, that's exactly why. Pay attention to which um, leaves you have and stems you have overlapping which ones so that they actually make sense. So right now I have this one as my back, my second, and my closest one. And personally, I'm gonna change that. I want this second one to be my closest one. So I'm gonna go ahead and I do that. I change that by just painting over it, making sure those directions are still there. All right. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna not worry about any of those other daisy stems. Those are going to come in later. And I'm going to go ahead and start to add some highlights to this and then some shadows afterwards. So I've washed my paintbrush out, getting a little bit of that lighter green. And just on the top of each of these leaves, I keep calling them leaves, they're stems, but on the top, the part that's facing what would presumably be your light source, light coming in from up top, um, we're going to go ahead and put some light on the tops of those. And again, you really see here that you have that highlight coming over. I realize that my lighting is a bit weird. I'll try to get that fixed in the next video. 
and I'm just putting it on the tops of each of the, the vines of the stems. Showing where they overlap by skipping over. And then I'll do it here as well. You notice I'm using my picky, pinky kind of as like a kickstand to keep my hand from doing anything like weird or twisting. And now I'm going back with just some straight yellow. I didn't even wash my paintbrush. Just in a little bit smaller sections, not everywhere on the top, but just overlapping that lighter green that we just made to really drive home those highlights. That's what gives it that three-dimensional feel when you finish painting. Okay, I'll really show where those differentiations are. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add a shadow to these, and then we'll talk about daisies. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my straight blue and mix it in with just a touch of that darker green. I'm not going to, again, make it 100% perfect. And then I'm just going to basically draw a line on the underside. Make it a little bit darker so it actually stands out. And I'm basically just going to draw a line on the underside of each of these stems. And then again on the underside, just kind of making that shadow, making it appear in a three-dimensional form, having a highlight, a brightest part, and a shadow as well. Okay, so now for our daisies, and I think I do really like the up the brightness on it. So there we go. You can actually see a little bit better. So um, now I'm going to switch to my medium round. If you just have the one round, that's totally fine. You can definitely still do this. And if you're doing this on a larger canvas, it makes more sense for you to just keep using that same medium round. But since I'm doing it on a small sheet of paper, I am going to switch to my smaller paintbrush. Okay, so in this painting, we have a few daisies that are starting to bloom, starting to blossom. And then we have, so they're just going to be small, like half pieces. And then we have about one or two that are large and full. So you can really decide how many you want. And remember that these are going to be topped by the top of, I believe they're crocus. No, they're not. They're not crocus, but they're, they're large bushy flowers on top. Um, so just remember kind of how wide those are going to be coming out so that they don't really overlap. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to barely touch the tip of my paintbrush to a uh, hair. Let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to barely touch my paintbrush tip to the paint itself, uh, or to the paper, and then I'm going to press down. So we get a little point almost going, and then I press down, I pull back, and I lift up. So that's going to give us our leaf shape. So start with a little tip, press down, and pull back, lift up. I'm going to do five leaves for these small ones, and then for the larger ones, it's kind of however big it fills the space. If I were using a canvas, I would totally be turning the canvas to make my life easier. But since I'm not, I'm just kind of twisting my hand and hoping for the best. Um, so yeah, so that's one of our half open pieces. Again, we want to do this in an odd number. So really focusing on not just leaving it out with an even number. These can be in different stages of growth and opening up. So, um, but just realize one thing, the smaller you make your flowers, um, not only is it saying that they're probably a little bit younger, but they're also saying that they're farther away. So when you go to paint your stems, really think about that. And we'll talk a little bit more about it, but just something to be aware of. If you want there to be any overlap in your flowers, this is definitely an opportunity to do that. I'll zoom back out so you can see the full picture. now. Daisy here, so pressing down, pull back, lift up. Trying to keep my petals about the same size. It can be challenging, it doesn't have to be perfect.
You can go back and fix if you need to. And then I'm going to make another large one over here. And this is going to be probably my crowning jewel, my largest flower in the bunch, other than my purple ones in the back. Remember, if your paint ever starts to get too thick, um, or it really isn't spreading like you like it to, add a little water to your paintbrush just to thin it out and to get it moving again. They can have the appearance of blowing in the wind, so this one I'm going to kind of have angled. Like it's getting a little wind through its hair. on the bottom as well. I can always, if my brush stroke didn't quite do what I wanted it to do, I can come back and just paint it in. I'll do one more just to make sure I have my odd number. I think I'll do one maybe down here. Since it's so close, I'm going to make it rather large. Don't be afraid to paint off the edge of your paper. with that and then I'm going to wash out our paintbrush and using our dark green again, the same one that we used over here, we're going to make the, the connection point where the, the bud actually starts to flower. So it almost looks like a little triangle at the bottom. You can definitely see it on these half pieces, but not so much on the, the fuller ones. Kind of adding a little bit there. And then you can start making your stems. And again, I'm just going to use the darker blue. And I really want to think about how those stems are going to kind of cross over each other. Which ones are farther away? So this one's farther away, so it's definitely going to be a skinnier one. It's my smallest one. I definitely want the smallest stem for this to really drive home that illusion of depth, the illusion of three-dimensional space. And then you can go ahead and start to fill in some other stems and leaves in your picture. For the leaves on these, I'm going to paint kind of football shapes or pointy ovals. And I'm, again, just kind of drawing them in with that darker blue. Ooh, got my hand a bit. Be careful, everybody. Be aware of what is what. Doesn't have to be completely even every time. Remember, it's nature. It's imperfect by design. Okay. And then I'm just going to draw some stems of varying sizes throughout the back. They don't necessarily have to have a flower connected to them, but just to kind of fill in some of that blank space that is the background of the picture. Maybe this is grass. Maybe other flowers just haven't quite blossomed yet. Your choice. And whenever you feel like it's complete, then you don't. Don't feel like you have to put a certain number or anything like that for these. Okay. 
Now, once that is complete, then you go back and you do the highlights and shadows again. You don't necessarily have to do them on every single one. I know that that sound might sound a bit tedious, but the more you do, the more realistic it will look. So it's, again, it's your choice how far you want to go on this. It's your choice how surface level you want to go. It's, it's very, completely your, build your own adventure. So using those lighter greens to add highlights. Stop mid-sentence as you're thinking and painting. You know how it goes. Use your pinky to help stabilize you as you paint. Try and put the highlight only on the tops. If your paint isn't spreading like you want, add a little water to your brush. And then once we're done here, a little bit of just pure yellow for that extreme highlight. Again, it's just in some strategic locations on the very top of that green that you already used, that lighter green. to do it on the stems of your daisies as well. Okay, and while we have that yellow on our paintbrushes, we can actually go ahead and put the centers on, if it's not full of green like mine was, we can add the centers on our um, daisies. So we're just going to kind of do a stippling technique, a little dot dot in the middle on the full ones. You can add a little bit of red at the bottoms and it'll mix together and make orange and that'll help make your shadow. You can show a little bit of that stamen action in the middle. Um, on some of the closed ones, if you don't want to, then don't do it. <laughs> so it's your choice. Uh, just getting a little bit of that red. Mixing it in the bottom, make it seem to be dimensional. And there we go. So you could be totally done with your daisies at this point. If you still have some of that background brown, you can actually go in and kind of separate each one of the leaves. Um, if you want to, you can add a little bit of gray, so white and black together to make a shadow. For me, for the smaller painting like this, I think it is just fine the way it is. Um, and the other thing is, while we still have that yellow going on, we're going to paint the outline for our B. So, because our B very well might need two coats. So we're going to kind of do like a triangle or a Hershey's Kiss shape for our B. Remember, you're going to have large flowers over here, so how much do you want your B to be overlapped by another plant? Then we're going to do a rounded off square that's larger than that original Hershey's Kiss triangle shape. And I'm drawing the whole V with yellow to begin. Not the wings, but just the body. And then we're going to do a large oval on the bottom, kind of curving in. I guess it's more like a crescent shape, but we don't want the butt to be pointy. We want it to be round and cute, like a bumblebee's butt. A little thicker. Want my bumblebee to be shapely, full figured. Okay, so again, a lot of times since we have that dark background, you might actually have to do a second coat. Um, ooh, wasn't even a picture. My bad, everybody. Um, but we did our Kershey's kiss. We did 
the rectangle, and then over there was that curvy um, half moon crescent shape. And I'm taking my white and I'm thinning it out just a little bit, and I'm going to make my wings. And I'm going to kind of do an oval like that. And I want it to be very, very thin, the paint. Because you can't really see an insect's wings beating. But you want that kind of hint that it's happening. All right, so this is where we're going to stop right now. We will do the large purple flowers when we come back and add the finishing details to the bumblebee. See you soon.